Hey, guys, welcome to Recovery TV Live. This is I'm, I'm Josh Nichols, my <laughs> colleague and co host, uh, Carrie Tiger. And uh, we have a really cool show today. Uh, we're going to talk about video game addiction. Is it a real thing? Um, is, is, I know it's something that a lot of parents and families are very concerned about these days. Uh, Carrie and I are both parents of small children, we're concerned about it, and we're so thankful to have an expert right here in our community that has taken a special interest in working with that this issue and we're going to introduce her in just a minute. Our guest today is Angie Ridings and she is a therapist here in our community in Oklahoma City. She has so much training and so many things and she has taken a special interest in our community in working with video game addiction. So just a little bit about her. She uh, is a licensed professional counselor. She's a certified sex addiction therapist, a certified multiple addictions therapist. She's a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. She is an EMDR specialist and so many other things that are so <laughs> wonderful that she does. And so without further ado, Angie, uh, welcome to our show. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, we just had Rob Weiss on the show, and I don't know if you watched that episode. It was fantastic, and mm -hmm. he really presents a new perspective of that. As parents, we're really kind of being overly concerned about tech use and, and make kind of, in a way, kind of making mountains out of molehills. But I don't know if he would call it a molehill. I think he would say that we need to be concerned, mm -hmm. but we're just doing it. Over, we're being overly concerned. Um, do you? Do you agree with that or do you have a different opinion on it or what's your thoughts? Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Rob in, in our field and I did watch the, the, the TV show. It was great. Yeah. He, he did a good job. I agree with everything Rob said. Um, I guess when I really became concerned about this topic is as a parent. Um, so my daughter's 16, my son is 10. Mm -hmm. um, in particular with my son, um, I was real naive about technology. Mm -hmm. I think just, just like most of us, we mm -hmm. figure it out the hard way. Yeah. Um, so I just I got really curious and I'd already been treating uh, other kinds of addictions and, mm -hmm. and so I just really started doing a lot of reading and research on really how to be a better parent is the way I was approaching it. And um, it's as it turns out, technology addiction r really isn't too much different from other addictions. Mm -hmm. um, as we'll get into here in a little bit, it, you know, it affects the brain the same way and mm -hmm. it has all the uh, same hallmarks. So right. yeah, uh, I just really wanted to have a healthy home environment for my kids mm -hmm. and sure. had a lot to learn about it. Yeah, yeah. which I think we can all, all relate to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. right. So you're kind of already kind of leaning to the main question for today, which is, you know, is video game addiction real? Does that exist? Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a, a fun topic to bring up with people because you're going to get lots of opinions, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, we don't want just opinions, but today we want to know what does the research say? What do you mm -hmm. know about treating people that are coming into you, and and you know what does it look like? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, there's there's plenty of research out there now that that does support that video game addiction uh, is a real thing. And the World Health Organization just this year mm -hmm. uh, announced that they are recognizing uh, gaming addiction, they, I think they're calling it gaming disorder, yes, uh, yes. as a mental health condition. Wow. And yeah. so it's a real thing mm -hmm. and it's something that I think we have to stay on top of and stay informed of as clinicians mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as parents mm -hmm. and grandparents mm -hmm. um, because it's everywhere. Yeah. Right. It's in our pockets. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Tell everybody what's happening in the brain uh, because when when we say that video games are a real thing, video game addiction is a real thing, mm -hmm. people might be going, well, that's your opinion. You know, but uh, so I think a lot of people aren't realizing that there's actually a biological phenomenon going on in the brain and in the body that makes this uh, an, uh, potentially an addictive substance. Could right. you reflect on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it all comes down to dopamine, basically, and the reward center of the brain. Uh, and that's something that all addictions have in common mm -hmm. is whether it's a behavior as with mm -hmm. video game addiction or with a substance like alcohol or drugs, um, it affects the same parts of the brain in the reward center. And so what happens is um, the brain gets flooded with way too much dopamine. 
And when it comes to our kids, especially, well, their brains are still developing. Um, and they're they're um, uh, very susceptible to being overwhelmed by all that dopamine. And mm -hmm. they really just start immersing themselves in that world mm -hmm. if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. um, so the brain chemicals are the same. And I, I love the research, and of course I'm kind of geeky on the brain anyways, <laughs> but um, it's really interesting to me that some of the brain scans that they've, oh, they've yeah. found um, actually show the same parts of the brain um, lighting up with a behavior mm -hmm. as with putting a substance in your mm -hmm. in your body right. and that's just really fascinating to me because it's really all about um, it really comes down to memory and your thoughts about the addictive behavior or substance yeah. right right that's a good yeah. explanation yeah. description yeah um, with video games being such a part of our kids lives a part of their world like how do we know mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. this is becoming an addictive substance for them yeah. or becoming addic an addiction? Well, it's, it, it looks pretty similar to, to other things in that um, it's going to really start to occupy um, most of the person's thoughts. Um, and, and really, I'm, I'm seeing a lot more kids with this issue than adults, um, but I, I, there are kids that will get up in the middle of the night and, and sneak down and play games. Um, they would rather play video games all day than go play with their friends mm -hmm. that they used to love to spend time with. So they're giving up other things that they used to enjoy. Um, they need more and more and more of that same thing, so that more of that game, mm -hmm. more of the excitement, or um, even going to more um, violent games and more exciting games than what used to be exciting to them. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really the same concept as other things. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the case of our kids, um, their, their behavior will change. Um, they'll become a lot more irritable, um, a lot harder to discipline. Um, some kids will skip school to play video games. Oh, yeah. um, they'll, if, if we don't put some restrictions on them, you know, they might, they might sit in front of the TV all day long and play for eight, nine, ten hours yeah. uh, or not go to bed at night. So I think it's really important to, to keep an eye on things and, mm -hmm. and put some limits. Yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> so it's impairing their their job. I mean, kids' job is to be a student. And mm -hmm. so to be a student, you need enough sleep and you need to eat and you right. need social interaction. And what you're describing there is it's bleeding into what they're supposed to be their occupation. Right? Yeah. And, and kids student. are supposed to have fun. Mm -hmm. Kids are supposed to play. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and video games is a form of play. But I think if that's all they do, they're really mm -hmm. missing out on the social interaction with other kids mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sports and exercise and mm -hmm. getting sunshine and all the the things that that we used to do when we were kids <laughs> yeah, right. outside and play right. uh, yeah. for course, hours and hours and yeah. until someone yelled for dinner. Mm -hmm. So right. um, yeah, but, it's but of course point. with our parents it was yeah. never enough. You know, we were never outside enough. Yeah. Right. Do I have right. to come in there, right. Mom? Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now it's do I have to get yeah. Off of the, the game, the game, please. Yeah. Five more minutes, right? And then yeah. after five minutes, no, one, I got to get up one more level, right. just a little bit longer, right? Yeah. One more thing. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's kind of like you're saying that um, parents you really got to work hard to find that balance because you know this is part of their world now. You know, like with my kids, I have to ask them, like when they say, "My friends said this or that," is this? your friend from school, your friend from across the street, or your friend from gaming, mm -hmm. from Xbox, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Just right. to clarify, who, who are we talking about mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's all three. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it, you know, and, um, and so they, they're, it's very much part of their world, and that's added a, an added um, uh, difficulty for parents to try to figure out now how do we balance this because when we were kids, they're like, how do we balance playing outside versus you know we had maybe had Nintendo or something like or that TV or, or even television, just television that screen uh, being yeah. on the telephone right you right know? Mm -hmm. um, and with every new technology, it seems like parents are having to figure out that balance yeah again mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah well I'm curious about this um, I was listening to somebody that was talking about gaming and kind of doing a cost-benefit analysis of it. And one of the things that he brought up was that it seems to actually be a little bit more, have more negative consequences for girls than boys. 
and it talked about the social aspect of gaming for boys seems to be different than the yeah, aspect yeah. of it for girls. I didn't know if you're seeing any differences in gender and who's coming in and the type of work that you're doing to help them work with you know, video game addiction or even just mm -hmm. symptoms of it. Well, I'm seeing a lot more boys okay. than girls. Uh, and I'm seeing a lot more kids than adults. Um, I, I did read some research just earlier this week that, that said that um, adults from 18 to 35 is actually the highest oh, wow. um, age group that are addicted to video games by yeah. 1%. Oh, okay, so okay. under 18 was 1% um, less. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not really seeing much of the adults yet. I don't, I don't, maybe they're yeah. just playing video games and not getting therapy. <laughs> right. Because <Yeah. laughs> uh, they don't have anybody telling them they have to quit. Right. right. Um, but I, I suspect that's going to mm -hmm. change okay. um, yeah. because they're, they're going to be having relationship problems and mm -hmm. occupational problems and mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be getting worse for all of us down the road sure. as clinicians. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I'm seeing a lot more boys, more boys. than okay. girls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the, again, questions a lot of parents are having is, um, how much is too much? Um, something I, I read this week, um, and I, I was doing some research just to brush up on my details here, and this is out of uh, Hillary Cash's book, uh, oh, yeah. Video Games and Your Kids. Yeah, let me put that on the screen yeah. here. She, she suggests um, no screen time for children under the age of two, which makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we want to put our one-year-old in front of a television. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, now we're talking about just screen time in general, mm -hmm. uh, which includes television and computer okay. um, screens. And she advises no more than one to two hours a day for preschool kids and two hours for elementary and two to three hours for middle and high school. And then she also suggests no television, internet, or gaming consoles in kids' rooms. Mm -hmm. um, that way it's not interfering with their sleep and they're not getting distracted by it and they're not right. less likely to sneak it if it's, mm -hmm. if it's not in their room. Um, I, this is just a personal decision that we made in our house. Um, my husband and I just decided that um, evenings during the week are too hard, uh, trying to get homework done and get ready for school. So we, we don't let our son in particular, since he's 10, mm -hmm play much video games during the week. Mm -hmm. okay. We try to restrict it mostly to the weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if he does get to play, of course, it's everything else has to be done. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, that could turn into such a distraction that the homework doesn't get done, oh, sure. or right. bedtime gets missed, and then he's mm -hmm. tired and cranky. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we just really set some strict mm -hmm. limits on that, and it works for us. Um, I think, Hillary Cash is being uh, generous here on the time. I think she's saying no more than that. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to be um, put some limits on it, then don't mm -hmm. go over that that amount. So that's right. that's the latest I've seen. Um, I'm going to make myself a little vulnerable here, um, because uh, and t tell what we do, because <laughs> uh, uh, I think we do same thing, similar to you. Uh, um, they get, they can have uh, start video game. Their video game time starts. Friday nights when they get off out of school yeah. is when they and then they can play through the weekend but it's like I think we have like a couple hours a day I don't know if that's too much or you know it's like I, I, I've, I don't know because mm -hmm. I'm like that's six hours a week you yeah. know if they use all their video game time and then on top of that they're not um, uh, they're you're watching TV sometimes mm -hmm. too you know mm -hmm. so it's just mm -hmm. it's just hard to kind of just you know when how much screen time is mm -hmm. too much and sure well i think as yeah. parents we have to make individual decisions some kids can handle right. more screen time and and they'll mm -hmm. their mood mm -hmm. won't change much and they're they'll still be right easy to, to parent um and some kids just can't handle mm -hmm. a whole lot mm -hmm. so i think we have to be flexible too mm -hmm. so that right. question of how much is too much so it's often just very individualized yeah yeah i believe so yeah uh -huh. And yeah. I think that's why parents have to really pay attention to, to what their kids are doing and how much mm -hmm. time and mm -hmm. how it's affecting them. Yeah. 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 yeah so speaking of that, um, what, uh, what would you say some of the risks? That, what, what, mm -hmm. That's the big question, right? The parent, why? Why should we be paying so much attention to this? Like what, are, what risks are our kids um, potentially going to have or problems are they potentially going to have if, if we don't pay attention? Like, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some, some of the obvious risks are um, affecting the mood and the behavior like we've talked mm -hmm. about. Um, some kids are, are just really sensitive to screen time and they'll, they'll be really hard to, to work with. And mm -hmm. 
Um, again, out of Hillary Cash's book, she talks about um, how the body clock can get out of sync, especially mm -hmm. if there's evening screen time. Um, so she talks about how high amounts of technology throughout the day or confined to several hours in the evening can be too much stimulation for a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that in turn will affect um, the melatonin levels in the body, mm -hmm. can get too low. And melatonin, as we know, is what uh, is in our body naturally that, that indicates it's time to go to sleep and that kicks in at a certain right. time. Um, it can delay um, what time they go to sleep. So if the melatonin's mm -hmm. low or their body's out of sync, mm -hmm. even if they try to go to bed, their brains are so stimulated they can't go to sleep. So then they're really tired. Mm -hmm. um, it also can suppress really deep sleep, the REM sleep, mm -hmm. that everybody needs to get into to really feel rested. Um, and it also can prevent uh, our core body temperature from dropping to the appropriate temperature so that we sleep well. Mm -hmm. And of course, health problems um, that have been seen, depression, um, brain inflammation is showing up on some of the research. Mm -hmm. um, alterations in hormone functions in the body like the cortisol levels, mm -hmm. poor memory, uh, being irritable, even suicidal at times. Um, serotonin levels can be blunted and not be at the right level, which is also a mood stabilizer um, that we all need. Um, and then, of course, way too much dopamine from all the stimulation. Um, it also, if they're too young and they can't handle all of that, it primes the brain for more addictions in the future. So it just kind of revs the brain up and they're much more susceptible to other things. Mm -hmm. Um, they're more sensitive to stress and the sensory overload. So that's wow. that's all out of Hillary Cash's book. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Cool. Yeah. I did not know yeah. those biological symptoms. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, this kind of can be kind of scary, overwhelming a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it can yeah. be. Um, yeah. But again, I think that's why we have to be smart yeah. and cautious as parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and just really sure. keep an eye on things and, and set those limits mm -hmm. for our kids because they're not going to do it. No. Right. They're kids. Yeah. Right. They're going to want to play, exactly. of course. Exactly. Sure, it's yeah. a game. It's all right. Yeah. yeah. So there's a book yeah. that you actually sent over to me as the one that, that you really like, and uh -huh. it's really intriguing to me, and I'm going to uh, put it here on the screen here, and it immediately caught my attention because Malcolm Gladwell endorses it, uh -huh. and so I'm definitely going to have to get this one because uh -huh. Carrie knows I'm a huge Malcolm Gladwell <laughs> fan. Um, but it's called Irresistible, The Rise of Addictive Technology in the Business of keeping us hooked. So what is that all about? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I gotta tell you, this book just completely, as a mom, completely rocked my world when I first read it. Because oh no, in a good way? Or? <laughs> uh, well, it, it, made me, it made me smarter. Made you, yeah. Okay. It made me smarter. Um, but he did such a good job, uh, Adam Alter, of explaining how the tech industry creates technology purposely to be addictive. Um, and he, in, in the very beginning of the book, um, this is what really rocked my world right off the bat, is he talks about how um, the tech giants won't let their own kids use the technology they create. Wow. Oh my gosh. And I was like, you're kidding me. Wow. 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 <laughs> that, and that, that says a lot right there. Yeah. If, if they're creating this product to be mm -hmm. addictive so that our kids want more, mm -hmm. but they won't let their own children use it. So um, every parent needs to read this book. Yeah. It is so informative. So <laughs> that introduction sounds like the uh, tobacco companies. Yeah. The cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, it's really the same yeah. concept. Wow. Um, and the alcohol industry, of course. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, much more so that with the tobacco industry with targeting our children. Because mm -hmm. they know if, if they get hooked uh, as kids, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the odds of them needing that or being dependent on mm -hmm. the rest of their lives are really high. Mm -hmm. um, so if they can snag them early and hook them, mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they might have a lifelong um, buyer. Wow. Right. Wow. Wow. It makes sense. Yeah, it sounds, sounds just like the tobacco does, industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds a lot like the yeah. porn industry, too. Oh, yeah. 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 So um, there's another quote that you sent over. Well, before we get to that, because I think it's going to go right along with uh, this question I have for you, which is, what are we supposed to do? You know what I mean? What's, what's the solution? What, what, yeah. if, if parents are recognizing this and their kids are watching this right now and they're going, oh, well, I'm seeing some of that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. what are the first steps? Um, so I, I think the first thing, though, is, is 
really recognizing if there's even an issue and if there is setting some really strict limits at home mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean you have to go out and hire a therapist for your kid or send them to treatment uh, I think it's it's just important to implement the the structure at home that our kids need and then if they continue to have problems you want to do a complete digital detox mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. that includes the whole family I don't think you can really mm -hmm. do that with just one kid I think everybody mm -hmm. needs to do it and of course as parents you know we we need our technology sometimes for our work so um, there would be some exceptions to that but I think mm -hmm. if you can do it as a whole family mm -hmm. and um, just try and get away from all of the technology for a while and um, and if, if you're having trouble doing that at home then then do seek some some professional help um, mm -hmm. and, and get some guidance on that right. Yeah. And, and people can check out your website mm -hmm. for that like it and uh, I'm sure you're like us that even if uh, you're not from Oklahoma we like to serve as a resource for people so I'll go ahead and put our website up there too so you can contact us and mm -hmm. of course you just saw um, I've been putting your website up throughout the, this interview and, um, and uh, for those of you watching this uh, therapists typically like to help people <laughs> So if, if you know that we're not in your area, you can at least call us or email us and we, we could probably direct you um, to some help somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But let me put up this last quote that you, you, you have here. Um, this says, um, this is you talking here, I'm amazed at the brain's capacity to heal. The brain has natural adaptive processes built in, but sometimes we need help with rewiring the brain so that it can be used in a healthier way. So I think that kind of goes along with what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and um, I, I saw Derek's talk recently on EMDR too. Mm -hmm. So in EMDR therapy goes real nicely along with mm -hmm. how adaptive the brain is. So yeah. um, the brain is just made to be adaptive. Mm -hmm. It's got all this built-in mm -hmm. adaptiveness in it. So mm -hmm. um, neuroplasticity is a real thing and, and the brain can be rewired mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. not really that hard. You mm -hmm. just have to know yeah. what to do and yeah. that that gives us all hope yeah. as uh, parents especially mm -hmm. and as clinicians that people can get better right. they don't have to struggle and yeah. suffer right well it, this has been really informative yes. I think we can I've talk, learned a lot yes. talk forever about yeah. this um, mm -hmm. I hope the people watching this um, are, are getting a lot out of this uh, right. discussion mm -hmm. yeah um, but uh, we are running short on time and so we really appreciate you being here to discuss this, but it is time to move into our Josh's fast favorite. five rounds. Yeah, this is your favorite. This is the favorite awesome. part. Has yeah, anybody made fun. you play though? That's the no. question. No. Okay. Oh, well, that's maybe, why I'm. Maybe Carrie can do that. So. Yeah, I'll work on that. I'll be out. So. I'll do that at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. I know. Okay, All we'll right. start off since you're so excited. All right, so let me read my own question here. Uh, I know. All right, so name someone interesting to you, dead or alive, that you've never met, uh, that you would like to have dinner with, and what would be the first thing you'd ask them? Oh, no, it's intense. Well, I've been reading a lot of Dan Siegel's work lately, oh, yeah. so that I mean that's just the first person that popped into my head. Yeah. yeah. I would just love to to pick his brain right. about um, about the brain and, yeah. and especially teenagers. I like right. his stuff on working with adolescents. Yeah. Yeah. Tell everybody who he is. Yeah, so Dan Siegel is a, a professional in our field. Um, I think he's, he's an MD, mm -hmm. actually, and he's done a lot of research on mm -hmm. the brain and mindfulness and working with adolescents yeah. and, and prevention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Just read The Whole Brain Child. I just yeah. finished it like yeah. a week ago. That, well, we can all three of us can yeah. geek out over yeah. Dan yeah. Siegel for yeah. a little bit, right? <laughs> all right, what is a fun or your favorite word to say? Uh, I really like to say plethora. Oh, <laughs> because good. how often do you get to work that into a, a conversation? <laughs> Very rarely. I mean, I've done it a few times, yeah. but it's just fun to say. It is fun well, to say. I believe you've given us a plethora of information. Yeah, I knew, I knew today. That Josh was going to wow, that was good. in there. I knew he was going to. I did it. I stole your word. That was pretty uh, good. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, All right. gosh. Um, yeah. uh, what song is currently stuck in your head? 
Um, so right now, the, the song that is stuck in my head the most is it's a Phil Wickham song, uh, Till I Found You. It's a it's a Christian song, but I just, it plays over, over and over in my car, and I can't get yeah. it out of my head right now. So, okay. yeah. Oh, that's good. that one up. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, um, what show are you currently binge watching or most recently binge watched? Um, well, I somehow talked my husband into binge watching Outlander with me. Oh, so, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. It's a good series. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. I, he pretended not to like it, but he's been asking me when the next season's coming out, which is soon. Uh, yeah. So that's that's a good. That job. means he's like to know my girlfriends. I've all been talking about it. Oh, so really? And Game of Thrones would be my other one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. Like, all right. Yeah. So we're down to the final question. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I need a prize. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Uh, what is the? Uh, we kind of changed the fifth question up from every now and then. Uh, what is the best uh, concert you've ever been to? I'm gonna have to say the very first concert I ever went to, Bon Jovi. Oh uh, my gosh! I don't know if that anything could beat that. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty goodness. good as your first concert. It was my first. It was, yeah. it was yeah, birthday. My 16th birthday. They ruined oh, tickets. Wow. And I'm a little older than you. I know, but they ruined you. They ruined me. Well, well that's they true. Get, I never get to the, the best at the top. Like, well, how that's you gonna true. Be, how you there gonna hasn't really that? been been one as good. Although as George that. Strait was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm. I like I listen to all kinds of music, so I'm not. Yeah. I don't try and restrict music. Maybe anymore. maybe Imagine Dragons could be. It. Oh. I've never been. They would be good. But yeah. I would love to. You'd imagine. Long. Yeah, I would yeah. imagine. <laughs> I did that. That's tacky. See what Carrie did there. <laughs> that was pretty smooth too. You guys are on a roll. Carrie, Carrie, Carrie could be, she could be smooth at times. I can be funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. well, Angie, again, thank you yes. for giving us that information. Yeah, um, my pleasure. We got a little bit of information we want to yeah. give everybody because we have another show coming up in two weeks yep. where we're going to talk about facing the holidays in recovery. Mm -hmm. And we weren't really planning on having a guest this time, but yeah. we've, like, we've been having so much fun having people on that we did bring somebody on. And we have someone driving all the way down from all the up or down? Down. All the way yeah, down from Stillwater, Oklahoma, to be on the show. Uh, Whitney Warren Alexander, who is an addiction and recovery expert. Again, she has is, is got tons of credentials like Angie does and has um, and been in the addiction field uh, mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so we hope you will join us to talk about that since holidays are coming up. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, recovery can be difficult for people. And when we say recovery, we're not just meaning drugs and alcohol or sex addiction. Sometimes people are recovering from mm -hmm. anxiety, depression. Um, toxic relationships. Toxic relationships, yeah. yes. And mm -hmm. uh, holidays can be really difficult, especially uh, because it's a time of year when we're supposed yeah. to be happy mm -hmm. through it and be joyful. And it's just not that way for everybody. So right. this is gonna be a really important discussion yeah. coming right at the right time. So thank you all for being with us. So tensegrity is the combination of the words tension and integrity. And um, when I first heard the word, I was going to a physical therapist and she used the word um, tensegrity. We're going to get your body into tensegrity. And it was such a unique word that I'd never heard before. I got very curious and started asking a lot of questions. And what I learned is that um, Tensegrity in the architectural field and in the physical therapy field really is, is about how structures are designed to have tension in the right places so that the rest of it's supported. And so with the case of our body, um, the joints are in the perfect places to support the rest of the body. So when we're in pain, um, things are out of whack. Um, so the tension needs to be shifted. So. That was really intriguing to me because I thought, well, that can apply to mental health oh, yeah. and emotional health. Right. And so I just ran with that, mm -hmm. that concept.